God for them. Come on, put your hands together for Pastor Andrew Wilkes, everybody. He has been here with us all day, and he preached an amazing message this morning. Made me want to go back and study again and do my first works over. Somebody say amen. But he's not preaching this service because his awesome, amazing partner in ministry, Pastor Gabby's going to preach. Amen. And so we all get a chance to drink from the deep wells of the ministry. But I did want us to have a quick conversation because uh, my dear friend um, is also an author and a scholar and an activist and an organizer and a historian. How else can I describe you? Great socks. Somebody say Amen. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> mine is just all black. It's all I got. Amen. It was, it was dark this morning. I couldn't figure it out. Um, but part of what we wanted to do for Black History Month is to also ensure that we could just have a quick conversation about the importance of this month. Amen. And the, as you said this morning, the black radical Christian tradition that has helped to shape us. But you also have a great book called Freedom Notes that you've written, and uh, he's selling them while he's here uh, for about, uh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 20 dollars. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say amen, right? Uh, so so uh, I wanted to just uh, talk a little quickly about this, but just say hello and introduce yourself real quick to everybody. First, can we give a hand for Pastor Mike McBride? <laughs> I'm really excited to be with you all today. Um, the basic argument of Freedom Notes is that we need to get beyond uh, a society that uh, calls for exceptions to the rule, and instead we need to change the rules of a society that produces the need for exceptions in the first place. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Health care and good housing and great transportation and clean air shouldn't be restricted to people who live in a certain place or who make a certain money or you get it if you have this degree. It should be for everybody, amen? Mm. And so genuine freedom happens when no one is excluded and everyone is at the very center of the vision. We need a polycentric vision of freedom where we all can be centered. A poly? Polycentric vision A poly, see what I'm saying? Make you want to go study one more time, right? Now, it's so important to appreciate that freedom, or at least the struggle for liberation and freedom, has always been a part of the unique experience of indigenous folks, uh, folks that are uh, descendants of African uh, enslaved folks. Talk a little bit about what does it mean to follow Jesus faithfully with freedom and justice as a part of our tradition, not as an addendum to our tradition. I appreciate the question. You know, Jesus, when he is dealing with some of the religious leadership of his day, uh, and he's giving seven woes, seven critiques in the end of Matthew. He talks about how uh, you tithe, dull, mint, and uh, deal, mint, and cumin, uh, but you neglect the weightier matters of the law. Mm. And among them, he, he names mercy, faithfulness, and also justice. And so canonically, biblically, that's also there. But when we think about the tradition of, of, of black folk uh, creating uh, a kind of Christianity that did uh, much more liberatory work than what they were given, uh, and this is Howard Thurman's idea that... Um, how enslaved ancestors redeemed the religion that was profaned in their midst. Mm. Uh, what we're calling for is a kind of uh, a genius, a kind of creativity, a kind of uh, everyone is included vision of emancipation. And the chapter in the book that I think is particularly relevant that deals with that, uh, there is a chapter that talks about going beyond racialized capitalism and traditions of how economic democracy and what some call democratic socialism, uh, that transcends more than particular candidates, amen. Mm. Uh, but we've been doing mutual aid societies to make sure folks have a decent burial. We've been doing the equivalent of community land trust for, for quite some time. And what you said earlier about that Acts vision of making sure we share all things in common, right? Th that emerges from, from our faith, right? Th that's not a electivist core curriculum. Yeah, it, or it should emerge from our faith. And I think part of what, what is was so need necessary for us in this moment, often I think we take for granted um, some of the ideas that you capture in Freedom Notes or some of the ideas that we hear preached and taught from our congregation into other spaces. But, you know, one of the, the reasons we celebrate, and you mentioned this earlier, and I'd love for you just to do a quick riff on this. Uh, if you want to hear his sermon, y'all got to check the 9 a.m. service out because it was quite dope and amazing. Um, but you talked about how Black History Month is such an important uh, memorial because the exemplaries remind us of our own greatness. 
or at least the potential for that. Can you just just pull that back out of your belly, <laughs> amen, and, and give us a little bit of that as it relates to why we celebrate um, these kinds of, of memorial months as relates to black culture and black folks' contributions to this democracy and to the world. Uh, absolutely. I, I think the power of remembering um, uh, the black power movement, right? And so that we can recognize that there's precedent and antecedent for the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. the, the reason we celebrate Sonia Sanchez and Nikki Giovanni and Amiri Baraka in the black arts movement is because there's precedent for soul development. Somebody say amen. Hey, hey. Right? And so, so knowing that uh, from a, a Christian perspective that we come from a rich cloud of witnesses gives us a Sankofa move where we look backwards at those who inspire us so that we can look forward and go do the work that God calls us to do. So it's this constant retrieval, recovery of the past so that we can remix it to deal with the conditions of our present. And so that, that's what God is calling us to, I think, at this moment. God, I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell you now. I mean, he, uh, and you know, he's just talking about his book. Can you imagine when he opened up that text? Somebody say amen. No, um, well, I am appreciative that you and Pastor Gabby are both here. Um,